Hi again there guys, I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I get ideas for my paintings, which are predominantly for my own photographs. So this image, although it's a little bit blurry, was one that I took a couple of weeks ago from a camp that I did. Um, and I'm just gonna show you how simple it is to produce something like this in your own painted format. So I've got this on the iPad, so I've got it as a reference. I always paint from reference. I just, I'm not one of these artists that can paint from memory. I need to have something to actually look at. So the canvas I've gone with today is just a small square canvas. It's more to reflect the size of the actual painting. This has been pre-primed already. And then just the basic three colors of the black, the cool yellow, the warm red, and the titanium white. Brushes are really simple for this because again, they're designed for beginners. So I've just gone with a 25 mil painter's brush and a 10 mil round head. So the painter's brush is gonna do the most of this work. And I'm gonna show you how simple it is to really create a sunset like this. The key is to not overwork the paint. So what I've done here is I'm gonna go from the lighter color to the darker. So obviously the pre-primed white is already on there. So I'm just gonna put some yellow streaks through this painting. The gaps are essential, and you'll notice that in the middle I've gone quite thick with the paint. Again, that's because I want to get some really strong dynamic colours later on in the painting. So again, going slightly darker with the paints every time, so going straight on with the red. Now, you don't want to push down too hard at this stage. I'm trying to get a nice vivid red coming through in the centre. Obviously, if I start to push this onto the yellow, I'm just going to end up with orange. So it's really a case of just making sure that you're keeping those lovely, clean colours in the middle. And then as I go further to the top and the bottom where the sky and the ocean is, I'm just going to have a bit more subtlety with the brush strokes. So here, I'm not pushing down hard at all. The key to getting those dynamic colors is to actually titivate the painting as opposed to pushing down where you end up squashing all the colors together. And then straight on with the black, you'll notice I'm not washing the brush. This is because water actually dilutes your acrylic and it gives it a, a really nasty opacity. I want to keep those lovely dynamic colors coming through. So because black is so overpowering, I'm literally just dabbing it on in the areas where I want to sort of dumb down the colors in a moment but I don't want to overpower the whole painting. Now, in order to blend all these colors together, I've just gone on with some white here. Now, again, if I'm gonna push down too hard with the white, I'm just gonna make the painting look like mud. It'll just all become one horrible bland color. So really lightly just blending over the top. Again, the brush has not been washed with water. There's just paint on this brush at this stage. But all the white is doing is just toning down some of those colors at the top. If I had just solid reds, yellows, and blacks, it would just be too dynamic. So that section in the center is what I'm looking for in terms of keeping it nice and bright. But the rest of it, I'm just very subtly going over with the brush, barely touching that canvas, just to blend very subtly those colors together. So again, not washing the brush. I've just gone on with a hint of red now just to bring a little bit more brightness through those top colors because it was toned a little bit too much. When you paint, it's always a case of adding and removing. So just always having control over your paint. But again, you'll notice the center section here. I'm very wary that I don't want to overpaint because I don't want to lose those lovely white areas. The lighter section on any painting is going to be the white canvas. So we don't want to work over that too much. So I'm just putting in some extra red streaks where I've lost some of those streaks from earlier with the blending. So just trying to get some of those highlights coming through again. And again with the yellow, because I just lost some of that detail in the center. So you can see how I'm barely touching the canvas. Just using the yellow now, just to blend in. There's, there's a couple of areas like here, for example, where the white yeah, is what I call crusty paint. It's where the paint looks a little bit uncomfortable. It, it stands out and you can tell it's just been painted on quite roughly. So I'm just subtly blending some of those colors through now, just to give it more of a naturalistic photographic feel to the painting. And again, just to finish off with this larger brush, I mean, bearing in mind this whole painting so far has been done with a large painter's brush. I'm just gonna work in the foreground. And because this was a sunset painting, it's nice and simple for the foreground. It's just gonna be 
in silhouette. So obviously we're just going to go black. So I'm just going to lay out the, the land area before I put any of the detail on with the smaller brushes in a moment. Here I'm dragging the paint because I want to have a nice sharp edge. I don't want to have anything that's too blurry at the top. So I'm done with that bigger brush now. And now I'm going to use the 10mm round head brush. This is quite a stiff bristle brush. It's the basic brush that most schools would use if you're, if you're learning to paint yourself. It's a really cheap brush to buy. I think this costs about $2, if not even less, in the local art shop. So I'm just dabbing the paint on ever so subtly to give a hint of foliage. There's a little grass stalks just flicking up from the bottom. So I don't want this paint to be too thick on this brush at this stage because I'm just using it to drag up some of the excess paint that I've already got on the bottom. This is a really simple technique, guys, if you're learning to paint and you want to produce grass, let the bristles do the work for you. And again, I'm just going to have a hint of some trees. So again, I'm just doing the foliage technique, dabbing on the brush. So it's what you'd call more of a dry brush technique, where you get those individual bristles doing the work again for you. So it creates a really lovely leaf effect to a tree. And you want to make sure that you get those individual branches sticking out. So you don't want to overpaint this again. I'm just going to add some extra detail over here where we've got a few more little bushes. Don't worry, they're not floating trees. It's more just to give the sense of the texture in a moment. We're going to put some fine detail trees on in a moment. So this is what I was talking about when it comes to dry brush technique. You get rid of the excess paint. So I'm just dabbing some of that paint off now and it gives me a little bit more control. So as you can see here, now I'm going to get that lovely sense of leaf technique with the brush. And this will save you hours and hours of headaches trying to recreate trees effectively, guys. It's such a simple way to do it. And of course, the larger the painting, just go with a larger brush. You can even use makeup brushes for this. Ideally, Stiff bristle brushes are better because obviously you're going to get a little bit more of that uh, texture, but anything in terms of, of like stiffness is going to give you that leaf effect. So this is the smallest brush I'm using today, which is just a six mil round head brush. And I'm just going to use this now to add the actual trunk detail on for the main trees. Uh, and then of course we're going to work the branches off from this. We have Norfolk pine trees here in Perth. They're really common. A lot of people call them religious trees because they all have a nice little cross at the top. So I'm just going to recreate some of that technique in a moment. Before we do that, we'll just put the little... Uh, I'm losing words today. Trunks. Tree trunks. But you'll notice I've gone with the red, not the black because I don't want it to be overpowering. But I can pick up some of the black from the actual foreground below if I want to just have a little bit more depth to the, the bark. And then I'm just getting, with the red, I don't want this tree to be overpowering because it's not the focal point. So I'm just going to use the, the fine detail brush just to recreate this Norfolk pine in the distance. Hence why I've just gone with the darker red. So you get that sense of perspective. The technique is very, very simple here, guys. You're just going to do some little V-shapes just to recreate that fir tree technique. But you don't want it to be too patterned. The problem with our brains is we always turn things into pattern. So you do want to try and vary up some of the shapes or else it becomes too, too basic. Now here I'm actually going to put some low lights just to get a sense of the shadow rather than putting highlights on the other side because it is a lighter tree. So just very subtly putting some shadows or dark lines through the branches on the right. Now 
Now for the main tree, I'm going to be using a fan brush. These are fantastic for doing foliage or for doing larger trees like this. So I'm just going to get rid of some of that excess paint. And it really does help you to produce trees like fir trees, for example. You will see a lot of people using these really quickly. They are experts at it. But I want to show you how a beginner would attempt to use this. So I, I would rather show you in individual strokes just to give you a sense of how easy these bushes can be to recreate these trees. <coughs> the difference is this tree here obviously has got a lot more detail. It is in the foreground, so that's why I've not used the fine detail brush for this. The, the fan bush would have been too large for the smaller tree but it would just about do right for this tree here. So you can see that I'm trying to vary up the uh, the pattern. I don't want it to be too regular. At the top is where you're going to struggle because of course the actual fan brush head itself is going to be larger than the branches you want. So just be a little bit aware when you get to the top. I'm just going to fill in some of these areas here. And then you can see I'm just using the very top edge of the brush to try and recreate that lovely top point to the tree. Now, because it is, the, 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 well, as I say, we call them the religious trees, we do have this distinct cross at the top, which I'm going to try and recreate in a moment. I'm just going to add a little bit more irregular shape so it doesn't feel too patterned. And I'm just going to finish off with that feature cross at the top. If you have enjoyed today's video guys then do please hit that like button as it really does help our channel and if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips or ideas for beginners paintings just like this one then do hit that subscription button just below. And there you have it guys, taking the photograph to a very simple sunset painting. We'll see you next time. <laughs>